Today, we become legends. So I've been generally quite positive about the prospects of Smite 2 so far. While I do believe the game has immense potential to be a much better version of Smite with a stronger code base, streamlined development, more interesting and skill testing item system, improved graphics, all that stuff you probably heard from me in other videos, I do think at the moment at least Smite 2 has some major roadblocks to overcome if it's going to be successful. That's what this video will be about. I'll preface this by saying I know it's a true alpha, not just a typical early access the game is basically ready type alpha like we often see in the industry. And overall, I'm still pretty optimistic about where the game could go from here. That said, the game is in a rough state at the moment, and it really shows from the lack of interest in Smite 2 from the community. We've seen Steam player numbers drop like a rock from Alpha 1 to Alpha 2 from about 15k peak to about 5k, and while some of that can be attributed to the first Alpha obviously having more hype because it's the first time people have ever been able to play the game, I do think part of that is that the game is just very lacking at the moment. I can't speak to other content creators or viewers, but I personally see many of my Smite 2 videos do worse than my Smite 1 videos, which is not a great sign. I do think a drop off in interest is natural given it's an alpha and plenty of games have had small alpha launches but continue to be built upon and have huge releases. Smite is no BG3 by any means, but that game is a great example of how an alpha can fly under the radar, the hype can die down a bit, but the game comes out swinging for full release. If the team keeps at it, a drop off in interest during the alpha isn't necessarily indicative of a failed launch. That said, Smite 2 is not years away from a full release, it's at most about one year away from a proper release, but only about two months away from the planned 24-7 closed beta release, which at that point is basically the full release of the game for all purposes, where it will become available to the public 24-7. That brings me on to my next point though, which is that I think the whole launch period of Smite 2 has felt rushed and a bit scuffed. I know it's an early alpha, but hosting a pro tournament this early without even a working spectator mode is an extremely bad look for the game. There's also a noticeable lack of content and replayability. For me, I just enjoy the core experience a lot and really want to to learn the item system to its fullest, so I personally am not that particularly bored of playing the same few gods for an alpha test. But I have seen a lot of players and other creators bringing up the valid point that there is a real lack of replayability, and after a few games, they just end up going back to Smite 1. Speaking of Smite 1 and the rush launch, I think they should have delayed the announcement of Smite 2 and kept a strong focus on developing Smite 1 more than they have. The current season of Smite 1 really feels lacking in content and innovation, and I think developing a full roster of gods side by side for Smite 1 and 2 over the course of this year and bringing more content to Smite 1 would have been the better play here. I think a lot of the complaints about Smite 2 are that it's absolutely not ready yet to be played as a main game, but it's clearly heavily affected the development of Smite 1 to the point where it feels like it's almost on maintenance mode, with only one new god this year and a noticeable lack of content compared to year 10. I think keeping a smaller team on Smite 2 throughout the course of this year and simply running internal alpha tests and or tests with ambassadors while continuing Smite 1's development as it was would have been a much easier pill to swallow for the community. If Smite 1 continued as is, who cares if Smite 2 is not ready yet? It will be at some point and at that point the people that want to move over can do so. But at the moment, we don't even have 24-7 access to Smite 2, and when we do have access, there's very little to do in the game. Yet Smite 1 is suffering because of it, and that really sucks. It's sort of a rock and a hard place. Do you play Smite 2 when it's not really ready and isn't as fun and complete as it should be, or do you play Smite 1 where there isn't really that much new content or excitement going on? I do think delaying Smite 2's announcement and running Smite 1 on SPL as it was for this year, then announcing Smite 2 at World Season 11 would have been better. Even with a smaller dev team, I think a lot of work could have been done over the course of an entire year to get Smite 2 into a state where it's more ready to be released into 24-7 beta than it is now. Of course, the leaks and drama probably had an effect on this, but given those leaks about SPL being cancelled happened before Worlds, they clearly had it planned ahead of time that there would be no SPL for Season 11 Smite. Imagine if this year had as much content as Year 10, SPL was still going on, and at this year's Worlds, Smite 2 was announced with 30 or 40 gods ready. Arena ready, the core gameplay more refined, and some systems in place like at least worshipper tracking, a real practice map, proper info pages, a more robust MMR system, etc. While it would have been a lot more work to continue Smite 1 at the normal pace while developing Smite 2 in the background, they have been working on Smite 2 since the start of year 10 with a small team and got quite a lot done. I think one more year of that arrangement to get the game into a better state while continuing Smite 1's path would have been a much more hype launch for Smite 2 when it's much closer to an actual full release timeline. Because at the moment, I just can't see the game being ready for 24-7 closed beta two months from now. Another thing that's hurting Smite 2 at the moment is the infrequency of tests and not being able to play 24-7. There's really not much that can be done about this because
because it is ultimately an alpha and the game isn't ready for 24-7 release yet. But as a content creator, it's very hard to make content for Smite 2 when we only have access once a month for a weekend and things are changing so rapidly. There's not much point in me making videos like a full conquest guide or how to play all Smite 2 gods guide because no one is going to watch them if they can't even play the game most of the time, which limits the content that can be made for the game to mostly just news and gameplays, which hurts the hype factor. I don't really want to go too much into specifics here as maybe that's for another video, but there's clearly a lot of work that still needs to be done for Smite 2, like more gods, especially more interesting and fun gods. The current roster consists of some of the most boring basic gods Smite 1 has to offer. Where are the Thors, King Arthurs, Yamojas, Ulas and Merlins of the world? I think a large part of why Smite 2 feels like a bit of a clone at the moment is because a lot of the gods added are boring and don't use the new item system to its fullest. They basically play identical to their Smite 1 counterparts, with a couple of exceptions like Hades or Zeus. There also needs to be starter items in my opinion, probably not fully upgradable level 20 starters at this stage in development, but some basic seldom late game starters, particularly for jungle or support, but ideally for all roles, will make the game feel a lot smoother and less samey. As I said though, I don't want to go too much into the nitty gritty of specific changes like beads, blink, individual gods, at least in this video. This is more so meant to be a high level overview of the issues currently plaguing Smite 2's launch and a way for me to vent a little bit. Sound off in the comments about how you feel about this topic and I'll catch you guys in another one later on. Have a great day and peace out you nerds.